everybody, JC here with another TNI Toy Review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new figure complex Amazing Yamaguchi Revel Tech Magneto figure from Kiato. Now this figure comes packaged in similar style that we've been seeing with all these Marvel Revel Tech figures. You've got the window box with the figure clearly displayed. On one side you've got the Amazing Yamaguchi logo and the Revel Tech name and a picture of the figure along with the name. On the other side you just have some comic book like art for Magneto and then you have the X-Men and Marvel Comics logos. On one side of the packaging you have an image of the actual figure. The other side you have images of the figure that are made to look kind of like comic book art and then on the back of the packaging you have more images of the figure showing off the various accessories and everything. And then a bunch of writing I really can't read. Alright, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, now first thing you'll notice when you open this up is you've got some word balloons on the inner tabs of the box. You get two, so you get this one that says I am Magneto and then on this side you get another one that says this is my home. And if you wanted, you could cut these out. They have little, uh, basically, lines to show you where to cut. And you can use it with your figure. And then also, you get this insert inside the packaging that just has some cool artwork featuring Magneto and the X-Men and such. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside the packaging along with the other contents. Now, first of all, you do get a little instruction sheet that shows you how to work all the accessories and everything. Okay, so starting with the accessories, first of all, we get a standard Revel Tech type figure stand. So you get that frosty kind of base, and then you've got the clear plastic arm for the flight stand. And you've got the three points of articulation here at the bottom, midsection, and top here where you can do back and forth. And of course, at the bottom, you can also rotate where you plug the arm in. You only have the one hole on the, on the base there. And then you've got up and down movement here at the midsection, and then you have up and down movement here near the clamp. You can also rotate the clamp. You also have screws so you can tighten and loosen these three points. You know, if it does get loose over time, you can tighten it, which is nice. And then you've got the clamp where, you know, you basically can clamp it around the figure's waist or you can remove it and you can plug it in. There's a place actually where you can plug this in to the back of the figure with just the peg. It also comes with extra ball pegs that you can use to attach the joints in case you lose or break one. So you get two that are just a single ball and then you get two which are the double ball type system. You get this little pick tool like we always see with the Rebel Tech figures. Now I never use these things but you do get one and this particular one is all white. The figure comes with two different pairs of hands, so you get a pair of closed fisted hands and then you get this pair of open hands and you'll notice the holes on the hands with these open ones and that's so you can use these magnetic effects that they've also included. So these are done, these are basically clear plastic discs with some purple uh, streaming electricity and then some white swirls. You got the little pegs on the end, but you'll notice on the middle here, there are these magnets. So basically how this works is you plug these into these open hands and basically it's a way to, to simulate his magnetic powers and then if you have something metal it'll actually attract it to to that magnet so it's kind of you know again just a cool way to, to make it look like the figures using his magnetic powers when you're switching the hands out just be careful don't pull too hard on the hands when you're when you're trying to get the hand off it's better to just kind of ooey it out basically the problem is is these little pegs that they've included with this figure have a tendency to split apart here at the midsection it's because of the you know they're articulated so they go up and down there at that midsection but they have a tendency, and I'll see if I can get this to come apart here, they have a tendency to break apart like this. Now you can just re-snap them together, but when they come apart when you're pulling the hand off and you've got parts stuck in the arm and parts stuck in the hand, it can be very difficult to get it to pop back in. So it's just a pain in the butt. So again, it's better not to pull too hard when you're trying to take the hand off. And then when you're putting the hands on, you just kind of push it in. It's better to come kind of from an up angle to get it to, to push in. And I haven't had too much difficulty, but those pegs can move a little bit around on. And then finally, you get two different head pieces with two different facial expressions. So how this works is you've got the helmet and this is what's attached to the figure when you first take it out of the packaging. So you can remove the facial expression altogether 
and make it seem like you know he's just carrying his helmet separately, not wearing it. Or you can plug in one of these facial expressions. You've got at the top of the helmet, inside there, you've got a little hole, and you just push this, slide this up, and push it in the face, and then you attach that to the figure. And again, you get two different versions of these facial expressions. You get one that's kind of a normal, at least normal for Magneto, and then one that's more angry looking with like gritting his teeth and such. And again, you can put either facial expression in the helmet, or you also get this hair piece. So if you want to have him without the helmet, you can put the facial expressions in there. And then again, like I said, if you don't have any of the facial expressions, you can put this unhelmeted head on the figure and then make it look like he's actually carrying, you know, holding the helmet in his hand. Now, when you're putting the helmeted head on the figure, you have this extra little piece that's the back portion of the helmet. And so what you want to do is you just slide this in up there and you want to make sure the purple portion is facing downward. And then you just take it and you plug the head in. You got the little peg there on the neck and you slide it in there and it'll fit nice and tight. Or again, if you want, you can remove that and then put the unhelmeted head. And again, it just slides on that peg. The figure also comes with this articulated plastic cape. Now this thing is, it looks okay on the figure if you want those kind of him floating in the air type poses. Definitely the cape has that kind of flowing with the air underneath it type look to it. But the biggest problem with this cape is it's very heavy and it's going to be very hard to keep your figure standing at least without a figure stand or something with this cape on. I've been able to do it initially but I can tell as the joints get more loose over time that this figure is just not going to be able to stand with the weight of this big heavy cape. It is, again it's very heavy and the cape breaks down into three different pieces. So basically, let me pull it out here, you get the side pieces and the side pieces are actually two different pieces. You get this articulation in the middle there, so you, it allows you with a little extra posability, and you can also rotate there. So both of the side pieces have that midsection articulation, and then you get this middle piece, which does not have any articulation. It's just a single piece, and it's the smallest piece of the three. Now, you've got on the back of the figure this piece that's attached, and this is where you got the holes. These three big holes are for the cape, and then you've got these three smaller holes and a hole down here on the bottom, which is for plugging the figure stand, the flight stand into, and that'll help you pose the figure. And then these pieces up front, they're not removable, but you do have some articulation there with these pieces up front that go over his shoulder. And I do want to recommend that the first time you're trying to plug these pieces in, you're probably going to need to take a hairdryer and loosen up these holes. I could not get these to plug in initially until I took a hairdryer to it. Now once I, you know, after the first time getting it in, it hasn't been a big deal. But again, that first time you definitely probably want a hairdryer and loosen those holes up. And you can put, I mean, technically, you know, you can pose this however you want. You can put the, you know, mix, mix and match the pieces. But this seems to be, you know, you kind of want the cape flowing inward. Um, seems to be the best way to do it. Uh, to pose it. And also I want to note that you know you've got articulation up here so you can do the cape outward more or down and that's the same with all three pieces. You get that up and down movement and you get rotation there because they just attach with those ball joints. Okay and here's the figure with the cape fully assembled and I've got the magnetic pieces attached and he's using his powers to attract some safety pins which he's going to attack you with. And you can see the figure is standing under its own power currently. However, again, I just want to recommend that, you know, you're probably going to want to use the flight stand with this figure primarily because keeping him standing on a shelf is going to be very difficult, especially if you start posing the figure and those joints loosen up a bit. That cape is just so heavy that he's not going to stand well under his own power. So the figure itself, I actually kind of like. I think it definitely has a Marvel versus Capcom feel to it. So similar to the Wolverine figure that they did for this line, I think, you know, if you're into the video game series and such, this is a cool figure to have. So I like both facial expressions. I think they look very Magneto-like. I like the helmet and the detailing. You've got the sculpting with the little thing on the top of his helmet. And then you've got the purple and the red. And the red on the helmet is a little bit uh, brighter red than the rest of the figure. 
and then you've got this nice wash effect on the costume portions of the red and then I like the metallic purple that they've used for, for that portion of the costume. So again overall I think they've captured the likeness of Magneto from the video game. I don't know if they did that intentional but that's definitely how I view it as being more of a video game type version of Magneto than a comic book version. Okay so this figure stands just a hair under six and a half inches tall. Here's a comparison with the most recent Hasbro Marvel Legends Magneto figure. And then finally here's a comparison with the Rebel Tech Deadpool figure and Rebel Tech Wolverine figure. So for articulation you can turn the head to the left and you can turn to the right and you can look down that much and he can look up about that much. You can also pivot the head a little bit to the left and the right. The entire neck will move with the head so you get a pretty good range of motion there. And then with the arms, you've got that double ball peg system so he can definitely kind of bend cross his arms over good and you've got rotation up there. Now trying to rotate the arm all the way around because of these cape pieces can be tricky so you really can't rotate the arm all the way around with, because of these pieces but still you know you can get the arm back pretty good and everything so again pretty good range of motion there at the shoulder and then with the elbows he can bend his elbows that much. Now one thing you do want to be wary with these Rebel Tech figures is the limbs will have a tendency to pop out when you're posing the figure around. It can be a little bit of a pain, but if you're experienced with Rebel Tech figures, you're probably used to that. You also have rotation there at the elbow section. You have rotation with the hands, and you got good range of motion there with the hands. And then you have a midsection joint, so you've got really no rotation there. A little bit of rotation, I guess, there at the midsection, but not a lot. And then he can crunch down a little bit there, and then back and you can pivot to the left and the right there. It basically attaches with a ball joint and then you get the rotation there at the waist and he can uh, basically crunch down pretty good there at the waist. You do get that gappage in the back with these but again you do get pretty good range of motion and then he can look back pretty good as well and again you can pivot a little bit to the left and right there at the midsection and then with the legs, legs he can do the splits pretty good and then you can get the leg up good and you can do the leg back. You got a rotation up there with the thigh and then with the knees you have good bending there at the knees. You also have the rotation. These uh, kneecaps are actually articulated so they go back and forth a little bit and then with the feet you have up and down movement. You have rotation and you do have ankle pivot and then also you have toe articulation with this one and no peg holes on the bottom of it. Okay, so that's my review. So overall I would say in general I think this is actually a pretty nice looking figure. I'm not really a huge Rebel Tech fan but I do actually kind of like this one. I think it has a Marvel versus Capcom feel to it like some of the others like Wolverine have. So from that standpoint I think it's good. The cape is definitely heavy and can be a bit cumbersome but if you want it for just like flight poses, hovering poses, I think it actually works well for that. You Using the flight stand. Getting the figure to stand under its own power however will be a bit difficult. I do like the other accessories like the magnetic effects and the helmet and all that I think look pretty good. So if you're a fan of Magneto and especially if you like Magneto from the Marvel vs. Capcom games I think this is a figure you'll definitely want to check out. Now this figure is available now. We'll have a full image gallery up at MarvelousNews.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, please hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I will catch you later.